Getting your foot in the door in the tech industry can be tough. There's multiple ways to go about it. This is how I got started. Hi, my name is Darren. I'm a software developer. And on this channel, I share insights that I've gained along the way and will hopefully help you with your dev journey. So back when I was in college, I really wanted to get a summer internship. Now at the time, there's pretty much two paths you can go down. You can either go to a top tech company like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and get an, a summer internship there. Or you can decide to go like a local route and maybe get a job at like um, a local software company if you have one of those in your area. So at the time, I tried applying to one of these like big tech companies because that's what everybody wants. And I really had a hard time getting in. A lot of my classmates were getting summer internships and leaving for summer and I wasn't able to secure one of those. So what I decided to do instead was I became like the door-to-door -door salesman of, of trying to get an internship. I went to local shops and I just showed up. I showed up with a resume and I said, hey, I'm looking for a dev internship. Will you hire me? And time after time, I was rejected. So I went the whole summer without an internship and now when fall started, there was a faculty member that came into one of our courses and she was telling us about this new program they had started. It was called the Young Entrepreneur and Scholars Program. And now the goal of the program was to pair students from our school with local businesses and try to create those relationships and hopefully land some students jobs straight out of school. So the neat thing about this program is that there was a select pool of students. So instead of the students applying to companies you know, while we're taking courses that fall, the companies would actually look at our resumes and reach out to us. So it kind of flipped the interview process a little bit. And this company reached out and they were the first like real software company that had reached out to me and I was super pumped. I checked out their website, their website looked legit. And then I looked at their app, they had an iOS app in the app store. They had all the things I was looking for. I got on a phone call with them and on the phone call, the I spoke with the CEO and founder, and he was really grilling me about past projects I had done and really asking about things I had done outside of school. At the same time, I took advantage and I was asking him questions about their dev process. What did testing look like? How did they do builds? Um, what their team looked like? And everything really spoke to me and sounded like that full software experience that I was looking for. So after my phone interview, I had my on-site interview. Again, this is my first like ever dev on-site interview. I had no idea what to expect. I did a bunch of research beforehand and I was expecting the typical whiteboarding sort of like brain teaser type questions and I was really freaking out leading up to this interview. So finally I get there and my interview was pretty chill actually. It was going over the business going over what the app looked like. And then after that, I sat down with one of the developers there and I went through this web project that I had built and he asked me a few questions like what I used to build it and sort of my thought process around building out those pages. Now, I was applying for an iOS position and it was curious that in my interview, they didn't ask me any iOS questions, even though in my phone interview, I had hyped myself up as though like, I had done like some sort of iOS development before, which up to this point, I had really only done like a hello world project. So a week later, I hear back from the company and I had landed the job. Then I find out it was $15 an hour. Now I was freaking out up to this point, I worked at a bookstore and I was making $7 and like 30 cents, whatever minimum wage was at the time. And this was like a big deal for me. So at the same time, I felt like I was a little bit in over my head I really hyped myself up in that phone interview to make it seem like I had done a reasonable amount of iOS development, which I definitely hadn't. So fortunately for me, my starting date was after winter break. So it gave me about two to three weeks to really brush up my skills or really like start my skills. I spent all of winter break and I found an iTunes U course from Stanford where they taught you iOS development. And I try to cram as much of that in as I possibly could. So in that course, it was a really good course. They went over basics on building an iOS app and it was actually a course that they taught at Stanford. So they filmed it and put the homework assignments. So I felt like I was getting a pretty good insight into how to build an app 
and get me prepared for that internship. So my first week on the job, um, I'm tasked with building a barcode scanner. Now, the Stanford course did not talk about building a barcode scanner. So in my first week, I was scrambling to learn camera APIs, to learn core graphics, to learn animation. Um, I really had to step it up to make it seem like I belong there. Now, I thought I would have like, I don't know, like a month at least to work on this project. But then midweek, I hear back that they wanted to see a demo by the end of my first week. And this is when, <laughs> and this is when I really started freaking out. So my, my whole first week, I pretty much looked up a tutorial on building a barcode scanner and followed that and then just changed it up to meet the requirements of my first job. And now in the end, it actually ended up working out. The demo was enough to show that I knew what I was doing, but it was pretty much just going through that tutorial, which completely saved my butt. Okay, so what did I learn from that experience? Getting your first tech job is hard. At the time, I was only trying to get an internship and I thought it wouldn't be that difficult because somebody would give me a chance or they would just have lower expectations because I wasn't looking for a full-time role, but even that's difficult. So getting your first job is more of a numbers game. If you're still looking for your first gig, just be patient and have confidence that you'll be able to land something. The second thing is you wanna use the resources at your disposal. So at the time, I was pretty lucky that that faculty member came into our room and told me about this program. There was a bunch of other programs that existed like that at my school, but I never bothered to reach out. So if you're at a university, contact your local career services and get in contact with them and see what they can offer. Most career services have places where you can go and get your resume checked. They'll help you build it out. And they even offer some mock interviews where you can go sit down in a room and they'll do like typical whiteboard style tech interviews to help you out. And now if you're in a boot camp, your resources will be a little different. You'll have to do things like tapping into your network. Maybe that's your network from your previous career or even the network of that boot camp or students that are in that boot camp. The third thing is you want to make your projects count. So on the side, I was working on mobile apps that were part of that local group at my school. Now, we didn't really have that much experience anyway, but just having that on my resume signaled to the people that were looking that I was interested in building mobile apps and helped me stand out from other students who necessarily just were using projects that they built in their courses. So you wanna build projects that are things that interest you and really showcase both what you're good at and what you're passionate about. Now, the fourth thing is when you're first starting out, the tech stack that you're working in isn't as important as you think it is. So for example, one of the things that we went over in my interview was actually my web project when in fact I was applying for a mobile position. So when you're starting out, you're so early on that no one's expecting you to have a mastery in that tech stack or that framework or the, even that language. Just as long as you know some sort of language and know like basic coding practices, you're gonna be able to apply that to whatever tech stack that company is working with. And last thing, and this is the biggest takeaway that I learned when I was thinking back about this story, is that my first week at that internship is still super similar to what it's like day to day as a software developer. Now granted, it's not as stressful where I have a demo with something that I have no idea that I'm doing, but what I mean is you're gonna be researching a lot on the job. So don't be expected to know everything from the get-go. When I get feature work on a month by month basis, we might be diving into something that I don't know. And at that time, all you do is look up developer docs, look up tutorials, and you spend some time getting used to whatever feature it is you're gonna work on, whether it be working with a new framework working with a new API or whatever new tool set you're gonna be using. And pretty much that's what it is day to day being a developer. So that's my story of how I landed my first dev job. If you like this video, consider subscribing to hear more and I'll catch you in the next one.